morning everybody and happy Friday. Hope you guys are having a good day, getting ready for the weekend. Gonna do a little bullies and Bibles this morning, figure out what we're gonna talk about today. Uh, trying to figure it out. There's a lot we could go over. Let's, uh, I don't know, my buddy and I had a good conversation last night, really late last night. And we both come from, you know, completely different backgrounds, which is good. That's a good thing. That's why, you know, friends should be talking and discussing. And we, you know, we were discussing a lot about magi and occult and things like that. And, uh, you know, there's, well, Adam and Eve, guys. The, the sin that they, that they had was... They took from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, there's a lot of different debates about what that is or what it could be. I have a couple theories of my own, uh, since there is serpent seed and seed of uh, Adam. I think it's possible that the forbidden fruit was not fruit at all but that it was actually something way more serious. And if we look at the Bible, and I'll pop the scriptures up in here as I'm talking along where I'm referring to, but uh, the Bible talks about uh, well, the Bible talks about sex as being one of the most serious sins there is. Because it's actually against the sin against yourself and the Holy Spirit. That's why adultery, fornication, all those things are so serious, huh, Ellie? That's why I compare us a lot of times to a bunch of dogs. Because dogs don't really care, they just base off of lust, wants, feeling. They don't, they're not, they're not. Well, let's put it plainly. They're not humping each other out of love. You know, they either are doing it for domination or just because they're a bunch of damn dirty dogs. <laughs> the thing about us is humans have reason. We were given commandments for a reason. But, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, there's a lot of stuff that we just kind of overlook. And uh, the Bible itself, and it's always st stuck out weird to me, that there's 66 books. I mean, what kind of devil number is that anyway? Who came up with 66 books for the Bible? I'm really curious, you know, I mean, it was a, it's the Nicaea Council, I believe, way long time ago, I'll have to look up when it was. But it was the Nicaea, I think that's correct, Nicaea Council that came up with 66 books of the Bible. That doesn't seem weird to you guys in any way, shape, or form. That you know, the mark of the beast is 666. You know, we have what 66 Bible books. That's strange to me. I always felt like there were things missing. And you know, the Sefer, uh, which I showed you guys, and I do have a series that I'm going to do. It's you know, Sefer series. I haven't really gotten much into it. But if that's something you guys are interested in, make sure you subscribe. Um, you know, I told you all before, I'm not trying to just shove scripture down your throat. But I do think that it's very important that daily we consider things. Every day. You know, every day is essentially a battleground uh, for your soul. And it's a daily battle. You know, I mean, people say once saved, always saved. But that is not the case. Because it says, be careful that you don't lose your crown. So, if you are saved, it is not guaranteed that you will stay saved. Unless you are working every day to honor Yeshua, honor Yahuwah, then, well, you're essentially a tool for the devil. Hate me if you want to, but that includes me. See, I'm not, I'm not immune from these things. I'm just telling you about them. 
Does it mean that I'm absolutely right? No, not at all. But I have read the Bible front to back many times in my life. Um, that doesn't mean I am a scholar or anything like that. I'm a very simple man. Uh, thankfully, God has given me wisdom and discernment to sort through the web of lies that we're accustomed to in our life. Again, you know, I told you guys to call myself Spider-Man for that reason. Digging through lies. Trying to get to the truth, no matter what. The problem is that when you get to it, and it's cold, hard, and ugly, I'm telling you. However, I always think it's easier to swallow truth than to vomit lies. So, you know, you can lie to someone all you want to. You can lie to yourself all you want to. Ultimately, you're just hurting yourself. Hot huh, Pete. Pete Pete, what's up, buddy? You looking good, dude. Pete's got his weight back. He's been happy as can be, running around with the boys every day. Guys, I do need to find Pete a home. I, I really do. Um, he is available as a pet. He's leash trained, loves to ride. He's $800. Please, tell someone that you think would love an American bully. I mean, he's good with other dogs. He's good with cats. He's good with kids. He's good with everything. I just simply cannot keep five boys. <laughs> I, I may not even keep my other four, okay? It's not that I don't love them, because I do. But I'm not just breeding a bunch of dogs. You know, I may breed them at some point. But that's not what I'm doing all the time. So, I don't need five boys on my yard. Uh, I do need to find Pete first, a home. And then after that, uh, like I said, Pete's $800. And then I do have Nacho or Bandit that can be available as a stud. Uh, but they're going to be a good bit higher. They're each uh, uh, 6K. Nacho is full, pretty much fully health tested, CFA heart certified. He is a stud male, classic, 17 and a half inches, and he weighs about 70 to 75 pounds. Bandit is a short pocket, probably about uh, 15, 15 and a half inches, and he is about 65 pounds in just over a year. Those are both champion Loso boys. Uh, Loso is not going anywhere. He'll stay with me till the day he dies. That's my commitment to him. Uh, was since the day I bought him. Uh, because he's my service dog. He's put in a lot of work for me. And I told you before, he has saved my life. So I'll always take care of him. And then that buster right there. Well, he's not available either. I actually turned down a, an offer for $25,000 for Buster and uh, it wasn't about money that is a grand champion Jaws son he has uh, a few breedings that are supposed to happen coming up in the next probably six months or so and uh, I gotta go take him soon he's going to get his OFA heart certification hopefully everything checks out okay there I did do embark testing on him and he is uh, clear on everything. He had a minor thing with, with eyes, which is very normal in American bullies. Um, where's this pup at? Come on, pup! She's under the watch this. What are you doing, girl? What you doing in the dirt, woman? Come on, pup. Pete, get out of the way. There you are. Hey, girl. Come on, dogs. Come on, boys. But, yeah, so it, it's never been, you know, about money. That's, if I was doing it for money, I would have sold Buster. But I waited a year to have that breeding, like his mom didn't take the first time we bred Jaws. And then I waited another six months, and I was going to get a girl, and I just could not pass that boy up. There was no way I could let him go. So Buster stayed with me, and he's going to stay with me. 
Um, he's the only Jaws stud male I have. Um, if you are interested in him, he is available as a stud. His current fee is $1,500. Um, if your female is, you know, very high quality, I may consider doing a pup back deal with you. Um, however, I really don't need any more dogs right now, so I would rather just do the stud fee outright for any of my boys. Um, they're all at $1,500. Loso's at $2,000. Lolo. And Loso's a champion. Buster's a champion. Loso has, he is a proven stud. Uh, Nacho is one of his, Nacho's his first litter. And Bandit is his second. And the girl Ripley, too, that you see in all the videos, that's Loso's daughter as well. So Loso's 2K for stud fee. Uh, Champion Buster, Nacho, or Bandit are all 1500. That's pretty much where I keep my boys to start out at. As Buster produces, um, his will definitely be going up. So if you are looking to use a male, um, you can lock him in if you ever want to. I am getting him checked on some stuff just to make sure. You know, I can't. Um, I want to make sure that we're doing healthy dogs and that he's not having a problem. So hopefully everything's okay when we go check, get him checked for uh, OFA, for his heart, and we'll go from there. But, you know, that's kind of where we're, where we're at for who's available, what's available, how much they cost. Um, I don't just breed dogs every day. You know, I, I love my dogs every day. You know, I sit out here and play every day. But I'm not just trying to breed a bunch of dogs. I am very selective. So even if you are wanting to use one of my boys, um, it's going to have to be to an improved female. Because we do need to make sure that they complement each other well. You know, if we're breeding dogs, we should be doing it trying to better the breed, not just doing it to make puppies. So that's something, like I said, I've always taken pride in my animals, making good choices. Um, and then. My old partner Julian at LA Bully Cartel, he's the exact same way. Like he's really good about uh, doing good breedings. He doesn't just breed dogs to breed dogs. You know, we've had hundreds of people asking us for puppies over the years and most of the time we say no. And that's just because we don't breed very often for that. We breed, especially him, he breeds for show. Um, me personally, I'm not really showing as much as those guys do. Uh, Buster may get back in the ring. He is a champion. He may go for his grand champion run at some point. But I've just been letting him grow and thicken out before I put him back in there. Because I'd rather, you know, I mean, honestly, I want when he, when he gets in there, I want him to have that wow. And he's starting to get it. He's about 65 pounds now. Buster, come here, Bo. He's got a pretty little trot when you can get him to walk. Come on, Buster. Come on, Buster. Not be chugging. There you go. Good boy. He's got great movement. Uh, Loso right here, he's got the best movement out of everybody. That dog is clean as can be from head to toe. Good bite, good structure. He's a, a short classic as well. Uh, Buster is pocket. Buster's like 16 inches and about 60, 65 pounds right now. He's starting to put on more weight. Nacho's my biggest boy, then Loso, uh, then Buster, and Bandit last. Bandit is the shortest. And he's also the youngest of the males. So he's going to get bigger. Uh, he's going to be a hefty boy. His, uh, he favors a lot his grandfather, Grand Champion Ricky Ricardo, owned by Jose Goris. And, uh, then he's got an uncle named Grand Champion Saga. He favors them quite a bit. Uh, real good boy. He's still filling out. He's got a big head that he's grown into. Buster Bandit. But he's been getting a lot thicker lately. So I think he's going to finish around 75 pounds. Uh, and he is staying pretty short. So coming along nicely. What are you doing, boy? Come on. Come on, dog. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. But I think that's probably about it for out here today. 
just a little, uh, you know, Bible and bully talk, like I've been saying, tapestry of truth, we're going to keep it real, try to keep it, you know, tapestry is like a, it, I said in my other video as a blanket, I didn't mean that, tapestry is actually like a, uh, it's an artwork, okay, so I'm trying to present these to you as a, a nice truth, <laughs> You know, some people can't handle reality and what truth is. So I'm trying to be nice about it. I'm trying to show you guys things with good spirit, with love. But at the same time, we have to understand that we are in serious times. We are in the last days. God's kingdom is at hand. Um, you got to remember to, to God blink of an eye is, I mean, a thousand years for, is a blink of an eye to him. Like, time is nothing to God. And he's never late. He's just given us every opportunity to do the right thing before he comes back and handles business. So it's kind of our choice whether we're going to stand or fall and what side we're going to be on. So... I'm just out here planting seeds, guys. I plant the seeds. The Bible says God will water and make them grow. I just got to keep planting seeds. I want you guys to enjoy your day. I want you to have an awesome Friday. I am continuing in my Sabbath research. Um, from what I'm finding is they used to follow solar lunar calendar so the sabbath is actually based off of when the new moon comes what i'm trying to figure out for certain is <clears throat> whether the new moon is when it is a dark moon and a new sliver or whether it's a full moon and the reason that i'm trying to figure that out is because there's really good debate on both sides and uh, scriptures that essentially can back up either side. So it's a matter of translation and who did the correct translations going back through the Bible. And that's also, hey pup, that's also where the missing books come in. The Book of Enoch, Book of Jubilees, uh, Maccabees, all of them have clues and things in them. Loso, heart. Look at Loso. Loso, what are you doing, dude? You're huge, man. What are you doing down there? Little pup's going crazy. Come on, dogs. Bo -lo. Low, low, so. Low, so. Come on, Bo. Low, so. Low, so. Come on. Are you stuck, dude? Low, so. Come on, Bo. Low, so. Come on, Lo. You can't uh, hardly get out of there. <laughs> what did you go under there for, man? You barely made it, dude. I'm going to have to take that up pretty soon. They're digging all the way under that thing. It doesn't work anymore, so we just let them use it as a playground. But they keep digging it out that way. It's going to fall on somebody. All right, guys. You done? You done playing? It's time to eat, guys. Come on, dogs. You ready to eat? Mika. There you go. This is always fun. Alright guys, happy Friday. Let's train. Let's train.